Howdy, it's Tubal Cain again, and in this video I want to talk a little bit about these self-opening geometric die heads. And I just picked this up at a swap meet here the other day. It was an old engine uh, swap meet, actually, a tractor swap meet, but I found this in a bucket. And it's a geometric brand, which was the premier brand, uh, and it's a 916... 916 DSA model and I think the 916 simply means that's the maximum size chasers you can uh, put in there but this uh, particular one came with quarter 20 uh, die chasers they uh, alone are, are fairly expensive so uh, you can change the the chasers to whatever size you want or can or need up to the maximum of the die head and when you install these make sure that you install number one in slot one and two in uh, slot two and so on kind of like you do with a three jaw chuck they have to match up and the beauty of these is they will self open upon completion of the thread and I'll demonstrate that here in uh, just a couple of minutes now when I bought this it had uh, well here's how it came with uh, this number four Morse taper shank and it was in a socket so the whole darn thing was outrageously long as you can see and this is all well we got uh, a total here of uh, 11 inches but it, if you put this in the tail stock you're still extended from the end here about nine inches I don't like that so I separated this and that wasn't easy to get apart because the end of the shank barely enters the uh, tang slot there and I couldn't use a drift I had to use a punch at, at a funny angle and it doesn't work very well but this is a number uh, three to four more staper socket and I, I guess a lot of people do use those but I'm setting that off to the side and then uh, I believe you can buy these with different size uh, shanks on them but I, I didn't want uh, the number four. I do not have a tailstock on any of my uh, lathes that have a number four. I only go up to a number three. So, how did I solve that problem? Well, starting with two and a half inch diameter stock here, and that was lead alloy, fortunately. I uh, I made a new backing plate here, and it's got four holes that had to be pretty accurately located and then I made a, a shank for it. That's just a half inch shank or arbor. I don't know which term is correct and uh, it's got a hole through it and uh, it's just a little bit larger than a quarter inch because it, I, I only have quarter inch chasers now. If I wanted, wanted to uh, uh, thread something larger I'll have to make a new shank but actually I think I'd like to have a number uh, two and a number three more taper uh, shank on this because the way it is I have to hold it in a, a Jacobs chuck and that also extends it a little bit further but it's not too bad. Also note that if you're threading something real long you can be limited by uh, the length here and of course when you put that all the way into your three jaw that's as far as it's going to go so you could not make a thread any longer than that but very seldom would you need it I would think but just one limitation actually these self-opening uh, die heads are to be used in production they aren't made for uh, a regular engine lathe like this at all but uh, they'll work but I've made uh, hundreds of thousands of threads on turret lathes when I was younger uh, using this type of die head and uh, and they can be used on turret lathes, uh, screw machines, and probably even on uh, some automatics. I'm not sure what they use on, on that. And they come in different sizes. Uh, if you look them up in the catalog, you will not like the price, so you almost have to buy them used. But the beauty of these, uh, when I say self-opening, uh, I just closed it, but when you complete your thread or you, you set your stops or whatever so that uh, the, the length of the thread is, uh, is what you uh, have determined you want you'll notice that it will uh, self open when it gets to the end of the thread or the end of the stroke so I'm going to pull the head out now and watch it open up and then when you're ready to thread the next one 
reset it. And of course after it reopens then you can uh, back <coughs> the work away from it or back the die away from the work and uh, you do not have to reverse the spindle of the lathe. A little closer look. And that cuts the time in half too because you don't have to back it out. Alright, let's run a couple threads and I'm just going to use some quarter inch aluminum because I have a large quantity of that. The quarter inch uh, aluminum rod is in the chuck and I've extended it an uh, inch and a half and I've already set a stop back here which I'll talk about in a second but uh, these are really made to be uh, run with a flood coolant or a uh, flood oil and I don't have that facility so I'm just using plenty of oil and it's no big deal here on aluminum but you do certainly want to lubricate these as, as uh, uh, liberally as possible. Now this is cocked and ready to go and the, the tailstock is just uh, free to slide. Now the speed might be just a little bit fast. I'm at about 360 RPM but it's a small diameter and, it, and it's aluminum but uh, you certainly want to adjust your speed uh, for the size and uh, of the stock and the material. So all I'm going to do, and I've got just a little bit of a chamfer on there, I'm going to push this up against with my hand. I'm pushing the tail stock until it engages and then I'm taking my hands off. When it completes the thread, uh, watch this trip open. And then it can be backed off without stopping the machine and without uh, reversing the spindle. Pretty slick, huh? And I've got that set so I have about uh, three quarters of an inch of thread. Now keep the die clean. You might have to blow that out from time to time. Already I'm going to thread another one and I've got it set so that uh, It'll be just a little bit longer thread. I allowed two inches to extend from the chuck. Reset the die head. Oil it liberally. And there we go. And of course, uh, you need to check the thread from time to time, make sure that it, uh, a nut goes on or, or however you're going to check it with a micrometer and, uh, and so on. Now, if the thread is either too loose, la truck, or too tight, there's a, an adjustment. Let's take a look at that. Now, if you look right here, you're going to see a witness mark and then uh, some graduations over here and you can move it either uh, one way or the other past the zero for a uh, uh, large, little larger or a little smaller. But that would be by experimentation to run a couple threads and measure them and then readjust it and try it again. But if millions of parts are be, to be turned uh, out on a turret lathe, you know, that's just something you have to do. By trial and error, I set uh, the depth, uh, or the length of the thread, I should say, uh, such that uh, when the tailstock slides, like this, at some point it's going to come up against the carriage right here. Now, I put a piece of uh, metal stock in there so that it, uh, the felt wipers there do not crash into the uh, carriage and, and damage them. So that, so I put that spacer in there. And you may or may not need to do that depending on, on what kind of lathe that you've got. And let's see here. Alright, let me reset it and, and run one here and you'll see that when this hits here the uh, die will trip and open. Now watch the die open when the tailstock hits the stop here and I'm just running the die over a previously made thread and I'll do that several times just so you can see the action of it. Watch it here. You 
could also go by a layout line here and just hold the tailstock back when you see it come up to the line and that works fine also but you better be pretty alert and don't try that if you've never done it before but you can simply run it in like this and then at some point stop it and pull it back. Now watch as I just thread up to the black line by holding it back with my hand. there and then you don't have to bother with a stop but it would be better if the spindle was moving a little slower so you had more control over it because you certainly don't want to crash this up against the chuck actually I don't recommend that last method I just showed you now watch it from this angle as it trips You've seen me use this tailstock turret with a number two Morse taper on it on the Logan lathe in some of my other videos, but this uh, certainly could be mounted in this type of turret as well. I'd have to make a new shank with a 5 h diameter that would fit in here, but uh, these are made to be use, used on a turret lathe, so this would be a pretty handy setup, but not unless you have many, many parts to make because the setup takes so long. And there's the threads that I just made on aluminum nice looking thread so we know that these chasers are in good condition and I looked at them and they're not chipped and uh, are damaged in any way so that's uh, a nice little unit I'm glad I got it and you might see this uh, in some of my future videos and uh, if you get a chance to pick one up for your lathe do as so and this is Tubal Kane saying so long for now